everyone, today we're going to talk about the sun. And no, we're not talking about all the dangers of being in the sun. We're going to talk about why sun exposure might actually be very good for you. And we'll also talk about how you can protect yourself from the sun naturally and why slathering yourself with conventional sunscreens might not be the best idea. I've received quite a few requests from you about this topic as spring and summer are approaching. So let's get started. Why is sun exposure so good for us? Well, there are quite a few reasons. First of all, it protects us against some cancers, for example, lung, kidney, breast, and even skin cancer. And you might be wondering, why? how is that possible? Isn't sun supposed to be causing skin cancer? Well, research from Stanford University actually shows that um, moderate sun exposure um, helps our skin fight against damage from the sun. Um, because it converts um, the inactive vitamin D3 into the active form, which then helps the immune cells in your skin fight against um, damaged cells and against infections. Moderate sun exposure is great also because it produces vitamin D, and you probably have already heard that. The vitamin D is very important for healthy teeth and bones, but it's also great for a stronger heart and lowering your blood pressure. It's great for keeping your mood stable, so no depression, um, mood swings and things like that when you have enough vitamin D. It also reduces insulin resistance and of course it protects from cancer as well. And due to hiding from the sun, and yes I'm the first one to admit that I've been the one always hiding from the sun before and slurring myself in sunscreen from head to toes, and people like that are more susceptible to vitamin D deficiency um, which then means that their teeth and bones are in danger and the immune system gets weaker as well. Some researchers even go as far as to say that more people die from vitamin D deficiency than from actual sun exposure. So that's quite a thought. Come here, come here, come to mommy. Ciao. <laughs> Hello. My little kitty, will you stay here? Can we record the video together? Okay. My kid and Jimmy decided to join us. Thanks for coming, Jimmy. Now let's talk about why using a conventional sunscreen might not be the best idea. Well, first of all, of course you know how much I hate everything to do with chemicals. Um, so that's the first reason why conventional, conventional sunscreens aren't so good. Those chemicals, um, they they're cancerogenic, they disrupt our hormones, and they make our skin more vulnerable to the sun instead of actually protecting it. But that's not all. Um, what it does is also gives give us a kind of false feeling of invincibility, and which means that we can spend hours and hours in the sun. But you know, sunburn is supposed to be a very useful alarm for us to get the hell out of the sun. But when it's not there, we can end up spending the whole day in the sun and even if you're not burning, it doesn't mean that some damage is not there. The problem there is that a lot of sunscreens only protect from UVB rays, but not from UVA. And UVB are basically the ones that make your skin burn and become red or tanned, um, but they don't actually do too much damage because they don't go very deep into your skin. It's the UVA that actually causes cell damage but it doesn't give you any warning because it doesn't make your skin burn. So a lot of sunscreens protect only from UVB. So you don't get burned, you don't get red, you don't get warned, but you still get sun damage. So what can we do to protect ourselves from the sun naturally? Well, there are quite a few things we can do. First of all, we should try and keep a, a balanced circadian rhythm. And what that means is basically um, going to bed not too late and getting enough sleep, but also getting sun or bright light exposure in the morning or early afternoon and avoiding bright light in the evening, not to disrupt our natural sleep cycle. And a great way to do that is a program called Efflux, which basically dims the light of your computer, makes it kind of more yellow in the evening, which is I think is great, and I'll put a link to it in the description box. Another thing you could do is rethink your uh, sunbathing hours. Just like I mentioned before, there are two different types of rays, UVB and UVA, and it's the UVAs that are really dangerous for us, but they don't give us any tan, it's the UVB that makes it look tanned. In the early morning and late afternoon, 
there are more UVAs and UVBs in the air. So you basically get um, less tanned or less burned, but you also get the same amount of damage. So here's just a thought for you. Maybe it's worth spending less time, say 15 minutes in the bright daylight sun, and get lots of UV but less UVA, then spend hours and hours um, in the afternoon thinking that your skin is not going to damage but you're not going to get a lot of tan either. Another tip is not to shower before going to sunbathe because um, sebum in our skin is actually the best natural sunscreen, well maybe not the best but it is our natural sunscreen, it's there to protect us from the sun. So if you wash it off and then go out to sunbathe your skin will be more vulnerable to sunburn. It's also important not to wash off um, the sebum from your skin as soon as you come back from sunbathing for at least an hour because you just need to let your body finish the vitamin D production and afterwards you can wash it off. And what to do if you're going to be in the sun for a long time, like if you're going to the beach for the whole day or if you're going to hike in the mountains the whole day, well, in that case, just cover up with light clothing and wear a white brim hat and you'll be fine. You know, there's no need to slather yourself in chemicals. And remember, if you don't put chemicals on your skin, if you don't over exfoliate it, if you retain that wonderful protective layer of sebum on your skin, your skin will be much stronger and will be able to protect yourself much better. So that might be a much better option for you. There are also certain foods that you can eat um, that are protective against the sun. The first of all, saturated fats is great and that includes things like coconut oil, um, olive fish, salmon, um, butter or clarified butter called ghee, uh, farm eggs, cream, things like that. But also such things like chocolate, coffee, green tea, um, red wine, grapes, they're all great as well. And also um, some berries, especially blueberries, are great, um, as well as some nuts such as pistachios and some grains. And finally, a very well known um, vegetable that is very, very protective is the tomato. And it has something called lycopene, which protects us from the sun. And it's especially good if the tomatoes are cooked, because you're going to get more of the lycopene absorbed. So it's definitely a great way to do it. And they're delicious. And then there are other protective foods um, such as broccoli, kale, cabbage, mustard greens, yams, yellow green or red peppers and cod liver oil. But anyway, um, in addition to everything I mentioned already, of course you can use natural oils to give you some protection if you know you're going to spend quite a bit of sun, the time in the sun. So first of all, the most powerful one is the red raspberry seed oil. And that one is supposed to have some protection between SPF 28 and 50, which is quite a lot for a natural oil. And it also has anti-inflammatory properties. And what I like most about it is that it's very light. You can hardly feel it. It's almost like dry oil. It's great for the skin. Um, another powerful oil is the carrot seed oil, which has SPF um, between 30 and 40. And Carrot seed oil is actually an essential oil, so it's usually um, dissolved, not dissolved, but diluted with other carrier oils. But it still works very, very well and it's got a lot of vitamin A, so it's great for the skin. Um, also, wheat germ oil has an SPF of 20. And then shea butter, which is one of my favorite oils lately, I absolutely love it, and it has an SPF of 6 to 8. And I like it because it's very nourishing. It looks very thick, but once you put it on the skin, it absorbs really quickly and it doesn't leave any oily cast or any oily residue on the skin. So that's great for anyone with dry skin, but also for anyone with acne prone skin. And then there are such oils as macadamia oil and hemp seed oil with an SPF 6. And those ones are great because they are very, very similar to the natural human sebum. So they're not going to clog the pores and they feel very light. Coconut oil has an SPF of 4 to 10. And coconut oil is probably one of the most popular um, natural oils to moisturize the body. But it also protects from the sun, so it's brilliant. And then you have jojoba oil, sesame seed oil, grapeseed oil and avocado oil. 
they all offer an SPF of 4 as well. So they might not be enough if you're going to the beach for the whole day, but if you're just running errands in the city, they would probably be completely enough for you. Another great tip is to build a gradual tan base. So that basically means that you should get your skin used to the sun gradually. So maybe spend five minutes in the sun at the beginning of the summer when your skin is still very light and, and then increase the time gradually until you have a light tan and the tan is one of the best ways to protect your skin from the sun. So here you are my natural tips for the sun and remember that sun can be your best friend um, in moderation so don't spend too long in the sun if you have to for some reason then cover up with light clothing or a white brimmed hat enjoy using natural oils to protect yourself eat nourishing and protective foods and remember to be safe sun can be your best friend but it can also be dangerous so don't overdo it so i hope you'll find this useful um, if you did please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to this channel if you like my videos I'll see you next time. Bye.